and welcome to the second video on the overhaul of this Gardner 6 LXB. We are hoping today to get it running, but before we can do that there's a few things we need to check over to make sure we don't run into any issues. So before filming we have done a little bit of preparation work. Um, when the engine arrived with us it would have had an oil cooler in the vehicle it came from, um, but this obviously has been disconnected when the engine was removed. So this hose has been made up as a temporary measure so that uh, we can run the engine, otherwise we would have oil all over the workshop. Um, because this was missing, the engine also had no oil in it, so we filled the engine with oil. Uh, we have also fitted this oil pressure gauge so that we can see uh, what oil pressure we have whilst it's running. Before we try and start this engine, there's a few things we're going to check over. It's fairly common on a gardener that's been sat for a long while for a few things to stick and on occasion seize up completely. Um, the first thing we're going to check over is the cam box and injector pumps. It is fairly common for the injector pump racks to become sticky and in some occasions seize completely. So we need to make sure that that is all free to move before we start the engine. Because if it sticks in the stop position, it, the engine just won't start. However, in the worst case scenario, if it was to be stuck in the wide open position, uh, we would have no control over the throttle of the engine. We wouldn't be able to stop it. Um, and depending on where it has stuck, the engine may actually run away. So first thing we're going to check is whether that is all free to move. So this is the connection between the two injection pump racks. Um, you can see I've already removed the guard that would normally be on the bottom portion of this so that we can check it. Um, now, this rack is free to move. So that's good. That means that we should have control over it. And we can also check that the stop lever works. To the left is stopped. To the right is more fuel. So as I move the stop lever, you'll see the rack push over to the left. Um, this also proves that the stop lever down here is free to move and works. So the next thing we're going to check is the cold start. This is going to be needed to get the engine running. And we've all seen the videos of people trying to start gardeners like these. And they crank them and crank them and crank them and crank them and they eventually start. Now, if the cold start is in use and the engine is in good order, it should start virtually instantly. Now this is normally achieved by a button here. It lifts a pull inside here out of the way of the rack, which allows the rack to go fully this way for maximum fuel. Now this engine being a vehicle engine has the slightly less common uh, cold start arrangement. And this is actually here. You have to lift the flap and inside is a screw that you turn clockwise and eventually it will allow the rack to move fully over. So that's the rack now over to the cold start position. The next thing we're going to check is the tappet for each injector pump element is not seized. Now this can normally be felt just by pulling on the lever and you will feel whether the tappet for under each injector pump element is moving. Um, some of them, like this one, has no weight on it and that is because the cam within the cam box is already holding the tappet right at the top. So that one we'd have to turn the engine to be able to check that one. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. And so is that one. So now we know there's nothing seized up on the cam box and injector pumps and that it all moves. Um, the next thing we're going to check is the decompressors. Although the decompressors aren't needed to start the engine on the starter motor, it does allow us to remove the compression when we're cranking the engine over to check for oil pressure, um, fuel to the injectors and that sort of thing. So decompressors on LXBs like these are these levers here. There's one on each cylinder head. So there's one here and one here. Now on this engine I've already checked, but they are both free. So we'll get the engine all connected up and see if we can get it to start.
So other than every mosquito in a hundred mile radius being dead from the levels of smoke, the eagle-eyed among you might have spotted something else that indicates this engine is not in the best of health. Any idea what it is? Yes, that's right. The oil pressure takes a very long time to come up and is a bit low when it does. Normally, the oil pressure would come up within a few seconds of starting. Let's see how long this one takes. Oh dear, that's not looking good. So um, we'll have to see what we find as we start taking the engine to pieces that might be causing the oil pressure problems. Now to investigate the smoke. What we want to know is whether the levels of smoke are from one or a couple of cylinders or all of them, as this will indicate different problems. Um, so we're gonna take the manifolds off and uh, rerun the engine. Hmm, the manifold clamps are all seized up and a couple of them are missing and very rotten. So uh, might have to take this off with the angle grinder. The engine will be getting new clamps and studs anyway. Smoke is about the same for all the cylinders, so we're not looking for a problem specific to an individual cylinder. So in the next video, we'll start the teardown of this engine and see what we find. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.